first, let's bring on Brian. Brian, welcome to the show. Thank you, uh, Michael, and hi, Vince. How are you? Nice to meet oh, you. All about medium rare. Doing good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You've got you've got a, a massive background. Just hit us on the highlights, and I want to get into Go Long and, and all the the chapters and things that you and the people that you spoke with there, please. Sure. Um, the subtitle of the book is "Why Long Term Thinking Is Your Best Short Term Strategy." Uh, and what I saw out in the marketplace is that uh, too many CEOs of public companies were succumbing to short term pressure at the expense of long-term uh, d- decision-making and long-term strategy for the benefit of uh, not only their shareholders in the long term, but their employees, their communities, that sort of thing. And, you know, there are a couple of telltale signs out there. One is that if you, if you look at the average time people hold shares in corporations, in the 1970s it was five years, and today that's dropped to seven months. And at the same time, you've got the role of activists, these investors who push for dramatic changes in corporations uh, in order to maximize short-term profits. And, you know, in some instances, the activists are right. A company's been mismanaged, and uh, the management needs a, a, a kick in the behind to get going. But often they're they're trying to strip out assets in the short run at the expense of the long term. Now, why is this important? Um, we're looking at a lot of evidence that the millennial generation in particular is becoming very disenchanted with capitalism, and that really uh, worries me. Uh, there was a Harvard study last year that showed that more than half of millennials uh, did not support capitalism as a system. Um, I think that capitalism is the best system uh, we have for raising people out of poverty, and I don't want to see it threatened or slowed down in any way, shape, or form. So what we did in this book is we took a look at six CEOs who resisted the short-term pressure and managed for the long term for the benefit, yes, of their shareholders, but also for their employees, uh, for their communities, and uh, you know, for the betterment of the economy as a whole. I, uh, I am the proud owner of, of five millennials, and they seem to love capitalism. And uh, they, 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 they don't hesitate. They the rule, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, some of the things that we see here, and, and, and I, I've you know, just got your book, and I was just looking through it. Is it So in, in some of the examples that you, you give in your book is that the CEO of CVS, $2 billion hit, those type of things. Tell me. Yeah, that's a great example, Vince. Uh, so Larry Merlo, the uh, CEO of uh, CVS, wanted to transition from a uh, purely retailer to more of a healthcare company. Uh, the CVS has obviously had pharmacies uh, at their locations, but they wanted to get into managing healthcare services, and this meant partnering with uh, hospitals and clinics and other healthcare providers. Uh, so, you know, he thought, well, if we're really serious about this, we have to send a, a message. Uh, and what he decided to do a few years back was to stop selling cigarettes which is a really courageous move because it, it caused a $2 billion revenue shortfall annually. Uh, Wall Street went crazy at the time. They said, how could you do this? Why are you just walking away from $2 billion in revenue? And Larry's response was, well, I really believe it's a uh, part of our long-term strategy. It's a decision that's going to help us in the long run. And since then, uh, that has paid out. Uh, CVS has joined into a number of healthcare partnerships. It's growing fast, and most recently it, it became strong enough so that it was able to uh, acquire Aetna, the giant healthcare uh, insurance company. Mm-hmm. Now, in contrast, is that you, we looked at Ford, we saw Ford, and how Ford, uh, Alamomali came from Boeing, I th- believe, and, and he did the turnaround. It was just amazing. So, how does this apply in the, that situation, which is obviously not the same? Well, what Alan did was he turned a company around by focusing on the long term. What he says is that if you have a strong long term vision for a company, it informs all your short term decisions. Mm -hmm. So when Alan got to Ford, and you're right, it was from Boeing, uh, he faced a $17 billion a year loss. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was right when the financial crisis hit. Uh, car sales were plummeting. Uh, the company 
was not going bankrupt because fortunately it had, they had the foresight to take out a huge loan right before the financial crisis hit, so they didn't need to get bailed out by the, the government, but they were in dire straits. And what Alan did is he focused his executive team on building the best cars in their class that were uh, in quality, uh, they were environmentally sound and that uh, they were appealing to consumers. Now, a lot of CEOs facing a $17 billion a year loss would have just cut costs everywhere. And Alan did cut costs and he had to lay people off. But he didn't take his eye off of the long term. And by the end of his tenure at Ford, he had increased the market value of that company by $48 billion. Hmm. Let, let me jump in there, and this is our last question we can ask because we have like a minute left. Uh, in in your book, you're talking about institutional manage, uh, managers shaking things up and the extre- uh, uh, activists putting extreme pressure on CEOs. What are, are investors like BlackRock and Vanguard doing to shake things up? Uh, Michael, that's a great insight, and it was a very important part of the book. So what's happening is that these big index funds like you know, the BlackRock manages or Vanguard. BlackRock manages, I think it's $7 trillion in assets and Vanguard's, you know, five or six. Um, they are passive investors, technically. You, if an, you run an index fund, yep. you buy all the stocks in a market and you hold them forever. But um, they are not passive owners, and this is a new thing. They've decided to engage companies they don't think are performing well. So they're hiring these stewardship employees whose job it is to engage with directors, engage with CEOs in companies where they think they really aren't performing uh, in a way that will position the company for a really healthy um, long-term return for their shareholders. Brilliant. Brian, I wish you all the best of luck. I I know you don't need it with the book, Go Long. Thanks for being a guest on the show. Uh, Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Vern. <laughs> well, all right. Vince, sorry. That's, That's right. right. That's all right, Grandpa. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, we'll be right back on the other side of this break with Sean Worthington, author, president of CloudCoin, talking about the Fed. You've been listening to Michael Yorba and Vince Rope on CEO Money. 